we do have a severe thunderstorm. Watch. Very, very bad visibility. It is severe weather. Just go to your basement. Ask. Ohio knows severe weather. Not good. March 5th, 2012. A tornado ravages the Claremont County village of Moscow. Start ripping the village up. It's just a debris that I just can't explain and a sound that I can't explain. June 29th, a nasty storm called a derecho rips through central Ohio. People had to get off, I mean, fly off the road in order to, so the car didn't get hit. Hurricane force winds tear down massive power poles. Trees are ripped out of the ground. A line of severe storms moving through the Columbus area. Without advanced warning, these storms could claim countless lives each year. That's why ABC6 is on your side to keep you safe from the storm. From your first warning weather team, this is an ABC6 Severe Weather Special, safe from the store. And good evening, I'm Bob Kent. And I'm Yolanda Harris, along with ABC6 Chief Meteorologist Bill Kelly. We're here tonight to help you prepare for severe weather. Yeah, guys, and we certainly have our share of it. And ABC6 has the technology to help keep you and your family safe. In the next half hour, we're going to show you how we keep you updated on severe weather and what you should do to be ready. All right, Bill and meteorologist Andrew Michael will also be answering your questions as we go interactive in the social media center. Andrew? Yeah, we're going to be on Facebook, Twitter. We also have an internet chat going on. And you're invited to connect with ABC6, ask your questions, and we'll be answering them through the next hour on Twitter using the hashtag OhioWX. That's O-H-I-O-W-X. On Facebook, you can find us with a search of WSYX or ABC6, and we will be chatting live on abc6onyourside.com. And also to note, we will be streaming this as well. All right, thanks, Andrew. And our first warning weather technology, really top-notch when it comes to warning you about severe weather. Bill is back to show you how our team of meteorologists can show you what time a storm will hit your community, even your street. As we go through the evening tonight, I want to show you some of the tools that we use to bring you the information to help protect you and your family when storms are coming into the area. So we'll spend a few minutes throughout the evening tonight showing you some of these tools. First, we're going to talk about the street level and the storm tracking. Now, I will say that the information that's on here is not from tonight. I have it in the can so we can use it to show you some information. But first of all, talking about street level, our graphics, we can get all the way down. This is Scioto Country Club here. So you can actually see the picture is this my neighborhood, but then we can also select and show you specific streets. Here's Ashbury Drive. Here's Lane Avenue. We have Highway 33, Cambridge Boulevard, Dublin Road, so we can really pinpoint in on your neighborhood where the storms are. I also want to show you as we widen this out a little bit on this situation, we do have some active storms that are moving through Pickaway County down into Ross County, and so we could do a storm track on these storms as well. And what we do is we outline the storm and we move it to the speed that it's going. Right now it's at about 50 miles per hour. And there's a couple of different things we can do. We can either put it on estimated time. So for example, in this example, another couple of minutes, it's at Commercial Point. About eight minutes from now, it's in Grove City. Or we can actually select some of these little needles that you see, these little pinheads, Columbus in about 16 minutes. Canal Winchester, Lithopolis at about 16 minutes as well. But we can also change that from minutes away now to absolute time, 7.07 p.m., 6.59 in Grove City, 6.53 Commercial Point. Again, this is not what's going on out there right now. It's just an example of how we can use first warning Doppler radar to help keep you and your family safe. And you can track storms from your computer at home or work with iRadar. Just zoom into your community to see what's headed your way. Just go to abc 6 onyoursidecom and click on Weather, then iRadar. And we have a brand new weather app for your smartphone or your iPad. Get your weather on the go. Download this app in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. We'll give you a demonstration on how it works coming up, and it is pretty cool. ABC6 has a close relationship with the National Weather Service. It's a very important partnership. I'm Chief Meteorologist Bill Kelly back here now. And Bill recently traveled to the National Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma to show you how we work with them to keep you safe. Yeah, guys, you, you probably remember that. That was back in April. Well, it wasn't only a great experience to travel out there to bring you the story, but it also allowed us here at ABC6 to develop a crucial partnership with the government's top severe weather forecasters, the Storm Prediction Center, or the SPC, we call it. They're the meteorologists that issue severe weather watches, and we at ABC6 make sure you get the urgent information you need when just seconds count. We take it very seriously, and it's a level of responsibility that um, isn't 
for everyone. Strong as flow aloft at 500 millibars. They're 22 of the top forecasters in the world, manning the high tech storm prediction center in Norman, Oklahoma. We realize that folks look to us to let them know in advance, to get the watches out, to work with local offices. We take it very seriously. I visited the center on a day when dangerous weather was forecast. The SPC had just issued a tornado watch. The meteorologists pour over a constant stream of data from satellites and radar stations across the country. Combining the technology that we've seen advancing within meteorology and also within the communications realm uh, has really made a difference in getting the word out and keeping people safe. The National Weather Service just reached a huge milestone in technology. And now we have a network of radars all over the country that really allow forecasters to have a to narrow down what kind of storm is most likely to produce a tornado. It's called dual pole radar. It allows forecasters to get a whole new look at storms. We can essentially see whether it's large raindrops or hail falling in a storm. You can see debris. 30 years ago, warnings were issued for only 25% of tornadoes. But thanks to modern radar and knowledge, warnings are now issued for 75% of tornadoes. And almost all of the strong and violent tornadoes, the ones that pose a serious threat to life and property, have warnings on them. Powerful computers create high-resolution models. These are typically four or five kilometer resolution. Allowing the SPC to publish outlooks. It's a heads up about the potential for severe weather eight days before it happens. And that word is getting out faster than ever. Social media, Facebook, Twitter can also get the latest information and get people to act. The proliferation not just of the internet but of smartphones that have the ability to display really uh, quite a bit of data, uh, whether it's local radar, watches and warnings, has given us the ability to communicate directly uh, with folks in the threatened area. An ABC6 relationship with the National Storm Prediction Center is key to keeping you informed. We can't do our job effectively without folks like you helping get the word out mm. you know well, thank you so, um, i've always thought it's a great marriage it, between it is the two. a great it's a and critical it's a critical partnership sure absolutely a small tornado watch the meteorologists at the national storm prediction center we are under that severe thunderstorm watch and we at abc6 work together to keep you and your family safe yeah, the Storm Prediction Center issues the watches when the conditions are favorable for severe weather. It's then the local office, the National Weather Service, that issues the warnings when those storms move in. And that's, of course, when it's time to take action. Uh, we deploy uh, here at ABC6, we deploy our team of meteorologists, reporters to give everybody uh, the updated information out sure. there. I guess the question now is, do you know what to do when that severe warning is issued here, particularly a tornado warning? Well, meteorologist Andrew Michael shows you how to make a plan for you and your family. There it is, right there beside us. Right there, tornado on the ground. When severe weather hits, you need a plan. The best time to make the plan is now. Have a plan. Practice it. Doesn't take a lot of time, but you don't want to be going through this for the first time at 2 o'clock in the morning with your roof being ripped off and you're trying to find your kids. So where should you go and what should you do when severe weather breaks? If you're at home, you want to get to the lowest level in your house. Get underground! Get to a basement, um, it's the safe, safest place in a house. If you don't have a basement, then you want to go to the lowest level of your home. You want to go to an interior room. If that's a bathroom, even better because you can get into a bathtub and then cover up your head for added protection. Basically, you want to put as many walls between you and the outside of the building as possible. So you have to kind of do an assessment of your house and figure out where would be the safest place. If you're driving down the road in the car, the safest place is a ditch alongside the road. You want to get as low as possible and cover your head. One common myth about hiding when you're outdoors and there's a tornado heading your way is hiding under a bridge. It's actually not safe at all. What you want to do is get to the lowest place possible. The reason you don't want to hide under a bridge all this open space is going to be funneled underneath that bridge, increasing the wind speed and also any debris. It's all funneling that. On a direct hit, people have actually been buried in that debris. Since mobile homes are not attached to the ground, they offer little to no protection from a tornado. Some mobile home parks have a tornado shelter, but knowing where to go at home or on the road is only half of your plan. What happens if you have a severe weather outbreak when kids are in school, you're at home, you're at, you're at work, um, kids are someplace else. You should talk to your family to know where everyone should go. I have a plan, you know, where are we going to meet in case communications go down. Know how to get in contact with family members if disaster strikes. When a tornado hits, power will likely be lost and cell phones often useless. Make sure the kids know where you rendezvous at, where is the flashlights, where is the radio, and where is that safe space, whether it's a basement or it's an inner room. So the, the, the lesson here is 
have a plan, practice it, and then you'll be prepared when it actually happens. Well, there are two types of weather alerts you'll see when severe weather threatens central Ohio. It's important to know the difference between a watch and a warning. So Bill is back to explain that. Bill? Yeah, I tell you what, we use those terms a lot, you know, when there's a good chance of severe weather. The Storm Prediction Center then will issue a watch. It could be a severe thunderstorm watch, it could be a tornado watch. What that means is that conditions are favorable for dangerous storms. It's when you should prepare to take action. Kind of think about your emergency plan, just as the name implies. Watch, watch out for these. When a warning, however, is issued, that's when severe weather is imminent or it's it's heading your way. And that's, of course, when it's time to take action. And that's when you should get to your safe spot. As Andrew Michael told us moments ago, you should already have a plan in place. So you know exactly what to do. All right. Thank you. And again, we're answering your questions during the hour. If you have some. Yeah, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and we have our live chat online. Meteorologist Andrew Michael is looking through the questions that have come in so far. We're going to check them out in just a few minutes. But on Twitter, you can use the hashtag Ohio WX. On Facebook, you can find us with a search of WSYX or ABC6. And we're chatting live on our website, abc6onyourside.com. So just go there and chat with Andrew. Yeah, I think a lot of information they can pass on to you just like that. Yeah, this is Safe from the Storm, an ABC6 On Your Side Severe Weather Special. Now coming up here from smartphones to weather radios, the technology that can help keep you safe at home and on the road. And the Central Ohio native who is now among the best forecasters in the world, how weather here at home inspired his successful career coming up. March 2012, a tornado tears through the Claremont County village of Moscow. Two people were killed as the twister blew homes to pieces. The National Weather Service rated it an EF3 with winds topping 160 miles an hour. The tornado was a quarter mile wide and was on the ground for 20 miles. That's rare for this part of the country. More people are surviving dangerous storms because of the advanced warning. Chief Meteorologist Bill Kelly is back to show us the ABC6 technology that helps us warn you faster than anyone else. The last feature of First Warning Doppler Radar I want to show you is the direct output from the Storm Prediction Center. You often hear me talk about the SPC, Storm Prediction Center. They're the branch of the National Weather Service that puts out the forecast for where severe weather is likely. It's not specific counties, severe weather warnings, but just, hey, this is an area that we're watching for severe weather. We can then bring you that information to help keep you guys safe. So here's what we look at. We can take that information and display it for you. So in this example, the green, which it's always green if you watch, is the general thunderstorms risk. Not a huge deal, just general thunderstorms, possibly some severe weather, but the yellow is where we get into the slight risk of severe storms. But not only can we look at the short term, we can go out, this example is for the remainder of the evening. We can turn this off, turn on the day two. Now you see all the yellow where in this example, this is not tomorrow, but this is the example we're showing you. It's a slight risk category. We can then break it down uh, even further. We can say, OK, well, what is the uh, storm uh, forecast in terms of the severe storm? So is it tornadoes? Well, it's not likely that we have any tornadoes out there in this example. However, when we go through and we put on the hail probability, now you start to see some color where you get the lighter shade of red here. This is a 5% chance of seeing some hail that's uh, an inch in diameter or more. Then it gets even darker as you go a little farther here to the west where the risk is even greater. We can also put on the wind probabilities for you as well and show you that in this example, it's also about a 5% chance of some stronger winds, those winds uh, pushing 60 miles per hour. So it's another great way to talk to you, to show you, uh, to help keep you safe where the storms are, where they're forecast to be, and what is the primary threat for those storms. Because ultimately, it's about keeping you and your family safe. And one of the ways that you can find out if there are watches or warnings in the area, even when you're not near a television, is of course with our Ohio Weather app, which is available from whichever uh, download store you use to buy your apps from. Very easy way to track here once you've got it in your phone, whatever device you're using. A uh, way to look and see what severe weather is out there, which lines of storms, and you'll see how easy it is to manipulate. A lot of the earlier apps with uh, weather it made it difficult. You had to wait for things to load. This one does it uh, very quickly. You can look at different lines of storms. A pretty quiet day actually in central Ohio, so we can track the storms uh, to the east of us here. With a lot of rain, you see all the green there, and there is that line of storms to the east. You can zoom in if you like and see which areas right now, for instance, Marietta getting hit with some severe weather. But if it was, of course, in central Ohio right now, you'd have not only this radar in which to work with, but also you'd have uh, weather overlays, a uh, warning and, and why 
watch overlays on it, so it would show you the boxes that Bill sometimes shows you to let you know exactly which areas right now are in uh, danger of uh, receiving some very severe weather. It's a great thing to take with you, especially if you're going to be near a TV as you move around, maybe going out and enjoying the lake or, of course, the golf course. Get that loaded into your computer. And again, you can download it. It's the first warning weather app for iPhone, iPad, Androids. It's all there, depending on what store you use, Apple App Store, Google Play Store there. Free. Just search for Ohio Space WX. Again, Ohio Space WX, and get it today. Yeah, we've all it's downloaded ours. 10-day, hourly, a map. It's cool stuff. I love the hourlies. I mean, it's not really, really germane to what we're talking about today, but, you know, every day you can go through, day by or moment by moment, and find out exactly what's Absolutely. going on. Absolutely, and, you know, something we... I wouldn't tell you about it if we didn't use it ourselves. So oh, yeah, sure. There you go. Absolutely. Yep. All right, let's go over to Andrew Michael standing by in the Social Networking Center here right now with some of your questions here tonight. Getting a lot of questions out there. We're going to address some of the Facebook ones right now. All you got to do is look for that photo on our Facebook page. But the questions, send us any questions that you have, whether it's where's the safest place to go. If you have any questions specifically, jump on there, let us know. We'll start off here. This is from Harvey. Uh, what is your take on people evacuating during a tornado? I know with the recent storms in Oklahoma, a bill was just there recently. They actually tried to tell people to evacuate in some locations. And Lee, Bill, what's your take on that? Well, it, it, it depends. If there's a huge warning and you have, you know, 25, 30 minutes and you can get out, then yeah, you want to get to someplace safer. But the general rule of thumb is get below ground. You do not want to be in your car. I mean, it's probably the most dangerous place that you can be when a storm comes in. So get to those lower level or as you were talking about, Andrew, in the in the package you ran earlier, separate as many walls between you and the outside is, you know, specifically in the bathtub, holding your head down for that added protection. Yep. too. And just like you said, lowest level possible. Next question from Kim. Where in your basement is the safest place to take cover, doorways, under steps? Thanks. It's against one of the walls, one of the concrete walls that's going to be the safest place. And as Bill just said, you want to cover up your head. Another question here. Can you mention more about Newark when there's severe weather? And uh, I can attest to this. If there is a tornado warning or if there's imminent threat for Newark, we will mention you. Which we have in one night. You and I were covering severe weather a couple of months ago up yep. in Licking County. And it was about 2 o'clock in the morning. And they issued that tor little tornado warning. Yeah. It was a very small area. Nothing materialized. But we were talking all about we were on the air live at two in the morning, so we absolutely cover wherever that severe weather is. For yeah. sure. And there's a lot of questions. Again, if you're using Twitter, you can use hashtag OhioWX. You can also uh, jump on Facebook. We're having a live chat as well on abc6onyourside.com. So again, let us know what questions you have. We will be answering those to the rest of the newscasts, and we'll talk a lot more about that coming up, guys. All right, thanks, Andrew. All right, Andrew, Bill, thanks. And when Safe from the Storm continues, we're slicing through the storm to show you exactly what's headed your way. 3D technology that helps us keep you informed. Also, the death of one of the most respected storm chasers in the business. Tonight, a local chaser's chance meeting with him before that tragedy. October 2006, two tornadoes hit the Columbus metro area. One caused damage to 67 homes in the Upper Albany West subdivision near Westerville. Eight of those homes were destroyed. That tornado was rated an EF1 or EF2 with winds reaching 120 miles per hour. Fortunately, no one was seriously hurt. Now, emergency sirens are key in warning you about tornadoes. And as Andrew Michael found, the Franklin County Emergency Management Agency is working to make sure everyone gets that warning. This is a huge tornado. If a tornado warning is issued, will you know about it? The Franklin County EMA is trying to make sure that if you are outside, the answer is yes. Now we're going to be at 195 sirens, which is one of the larger siren systems in the United States. Tornado sirens were introduced during the Cold War. Since then, they have been a crucial signal to alert anyone outside to seek shelter. Franklin County just recently added more sirens. Well, we're um, in the process of adding 14 new sirens to our system. And you can see this tornado siren in between the two trees, just one of the many that the Franklin EMA is using to fill in all of the gaps here in Franklin County, especially when it comes to the city of Columbus. And I want to give the credit to Columbus, Ohio, because they have been an aggressive purchaser of those for the last five years. There has been a huge increase in tornado warning lead time before the tornado hits. And I think in Texas, 26 minute warning. And when it comes to a tornado bearing down on you, 26 minutes is much more of a warning than we had even a decade ago. 26 minutes gives any family who has a plan um, ample opportunity to get to a safe place. Franklin County EMA is working to keep up with the times and alert people other than just with tornado sirens. It's part of our warning system, so it's just not out there warning sirens, but it's social media, it's email, it's texting, it's radio, but it's a good tool to have in your toolkit 
for warning citizens. With one of the largest siren systems in the country, if a tornado happens to touch down in Franklin County, Ohio, and you are outside, you will know. The more that you can have and the more area that you can cover, um, it saves lives. And Delaware County and others also have reverse 911 system that will call you when there's a tornado warning. Regardless, EMA directors and forecasters say a weather radio is your best option. How they work and how much they cost, that's coming up in just a bit, guys. All right, thank you, Andrew. Well, strong winds, large hail, pouring rain. ABC6 has the technology that shows you what the next big storm will bring. Mm -hmm. Bill is back now to show us how he can slice right through a storm to see what's inside. The next tool I want to show you is something that you don't see on the air a lot, but I use it all the time. Check this out. It's called X vision and what it does is it allows us the opportunity to slice into the storm and see it on the three dimensional level. So in this example, you see all this rainfall that extends all the way down out of Franklin County, Fairfield County and areas to the south. You might look at this and say, well, man, that's a massive storm that's working through. But when we take the slice and we look at it three dimensionally, what this tells us is that it's really not that big of a deal. As I zoom on down, what I'll do then is I will look at this and I'll say, OK, the cloud top here. Do you see all this area? This is how high up in the atmosphere this is going. It's only 17,000 feet, so this is a very heavy rain event. If this were a big, severe thunderstorm, this number here might be up to 30,000 feet or, or taller. You get these big cells that move across. So when we look at this, not only does it tell us rain, but it also tells us the possibility of hail because sometimes you'll see up here in the atmosphere some darker shades, which would indicate a hail signature. So again, I don't run that on the air a lot because it's slice, it's three dimensional, it's all kind of crazy stuff. I do every now and then, but I look at it all the time to help keep you and your family safe so we can forecast uh, what's going to be where you live. All right, Bill, in the future technology that will give you even more time to prepare for severe weather. It's coming up on Safe from the Storm and ABC6 on your side, severe weather special. Also tonight, how to prepare an emergency supply kit so you're ready if severe weather strikes. April 1974, a monster tornado hit Xenia, Ohio. At least 32 people were killed, half of the city's buildings damaged, and 300 homes destroyed. Experts estimate wind speeds of at least 300 miles per hour. It was an F5, part of the second worst tornado outbreak in American history. More than 300 people killed when at least 30 F4 and F5 tornadoes hit 13 states. And of course, modern weather technology gives us a lot more information about what's in storms than we had 40 years ago. Yeah, Bill is back now to show us how we can show you the amount of rain and lightning in a storm, giving you an idea of just how strong it is. Another feature with first warning Doppler radar that I use all the time on air, I think it tells a lot about the storm, is the way we can sample and see how much rainfall there is. Now on this example, and again, this is not right now, this was uh, a little bit last week, I saved this information to show you. We're looking at rainfall that is moving up into Franklin County, as you can see. And what we can do, let me show you down here, I can select what's called ID weather. It then utilizes the information from the storm to tell you how much rain is estimated to fall. So you see these yellows are between about a half an inch to an inch. But if we get a real tight look here up near Slate Run Metro Park on this night, and I ID this, I mean, we have rainfall rates here that are knocking on the door of two to three inches per hour. It tells you where the intensity is. It really helps us out when we're talking about things like flooding. And so it's a good way to sample the storm to show you what's going on. Another thing we watch for is the lightning tracker. Now the lightning tracker rec records the cloud to ground lightning strike, not just all the lightning in the clouds, but the ones that actually strike the ground. And on this one here, that's what that number there shows you. That 31, that is the number of cloud to ground lightning strikes just within this field of view. And so you see these little emblems. There's a couple here north of Circleville, one over north of Stoutsville, and that's one back to the west as well. Those are where those cloud to ground lightning strikes are. And not only that, we can define the parameters. So this happens to be in the last 30 minutes. Watch what happens to the number when I say put us over the last three hours or so, and I move this up to the Cleveland area where there's more lightning over 1100 strikes just in the past couple of hours. And not only does it tell us where the lightning is to help keep you and your family safe, it also helps us determine if the storms are strengthening and weakening, which again also helps keep you and your family safe. All right, Bill, thanks. Now we talked about tornado sirens warning you when you're outside, 
But what about when you're at home sleeping? Well, that's where weather radios come in. And as Andrew Michael explains, experts say everybody should have one. Right there, tornado on the ground. The greatest single purchase could be a weather radio because it operates on electricity and batteries. For only about 30 bucks, you can pick up a NOAA weather radio. These NOAA weather radios will sound an alarm if a warning is issued. The best part is that you will know as soon as a warning is issued. If you can have a weather radio, you get the same information at the same time that we do. And we have a microwave dish and we're in constant contact with the National Weather, but these, these weather radios really do the trick. And if you're concerned about your weather radio going off for every single county in the viewing area, don't worry. You can actually program all of the new ones now so that way it only goes off for your county's code. For Franklin County, 039-049, we're set to go. And we actually have a list for all of the counties in the viewing area on our website so you can program your county as well. And the sooner you know there is life-threatening weather on the way, the sooner you can seek shelter. So far this year, the National Weather Service offices have increased warning times oh to God. sometimes more than 20 minutes. 26 minutes gives any family who has a plan um, ample opportunity to get to a safe place. Get underground! Which is plenty of time to get your prepared kit to your safe room in your basement or interior room before the storm hits. And also it gives people time that working at a business during the day to enact their plan. So it might not be a bad idea to ask your boss if there's a NOAA weather radio at work either. You know, it's funny about the weather radio. I, I Mine sits there and I think it's not working, or at least I did for a couple of years until I was awakened in the middle of the night twice by it uh, to let me know that we were under a tornado warning. And so, you know, it, it does work. It's a little bit of a surprise. Let's put it, it that is, way. But it's good. It is, and they're loud. Yeah, and, but and, and, and you're awake. But, Absolutely. But it's good. You realize you're safer because of it. And that, that's that's why they're loud. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we have some other questions. Andrew, Mike, we're back in the social media center. What, what uh, questions are people asking here live? Getting a lot of great questions. Uh, so we'll start off here with Eric's question. Where would you go if there's a tornado warning and you're in the newsroom? Newsroom studio, we go right outside the studio, about 10 yards away, block walls. So that's where we stay safe. Question here. We'll go back to that. Uh, so walkout basement is safe during a tornado. Yeah, you want to get as far away from that opening as possible and get next to those concrete block walls because that is where you're going to stay the safest. Uh, please give a list of supplies needed for your safe area. That's the next story coming up here in just a few minutes. So stay tuned for that. I want to go back to another question here. What should you do with your pets, Bill? I would say take your pets with you if you can. Now, if you have a lot of you have, you have horses and those types of things, well, a lot of those uh, if you have big fields, they're going to be on their own. Hopefully there's some area they can go. But if you have a couple of dogs or, or a dog or a cat, yeah, take them with you into your safe zone for sure because pets, just like humans, uh, need that protection as well. Yep. Uh, also another question here from a viewer. What direction does severe weather come from? I was told the southwest is. Is this true? Well, the majority of the time, but here in Ohio and someone else asked on the live chat, what's the tornado season? Same situation. They can come from any direction, any time of the year. We've had tornadoes from January all the way to December, so stay on guard, right, Bill? Well, yeah, absolutely. And the El Reno tornado there in uh, Oklahoma City, that one took a shift to the right, then back to the left, and, and but yeah, typically southwest and northeast, but not always. So you got to be very, very careful. And of course, that's part of our storm tracking technology that we show you where the storms are heading, not only how far, uh, how fast they're going to get in your neighborhood, but uh, which direction that they're heading as well. And final question here before we uh, go out real quick. Someone asked, I live in a trailer park in Hebron. L Landlord says if there's tornado to go to the Kroger's across the street uh, if there's enough time. But if we are telling you, hey, this is coming on you, it's immediate that you need to get to shelter, get outside, get to a low lying area, a ditch as quick as possible. But if there's enough time, if we're saying, hey, it's coming towards you, you've got five, 10 minutes, mm -hmm. might not be a bad idea. You want to get next to a close, secure wall. So get to shelter as quick as possible. Keep the questions coming. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and live chat on abc6onyourside.com. Bob, Yolanda? All right, Andrew, we've been talking about how technology is helping forecasters give you more time to prepare for severe weather than ever before. And Chief Meteorologist Bill Kelly is back to show us how it will be even better in the future. Bill? Yeah, you know, moments ago we saw how they forecast severe weather for the entire country at the SPC. Now the technology of today and tomorrow. The meteorologists at the Storm Prediction Center have the most advanced forecasting technology at their fingertips, radar being a key tool. The data that we get from the network of Doppler radar is um, amazing in terms of what it can tell us. This is the storm that rolled through in April around Columbus. During my recent visit to the SPC, some of the top forecasters in the world showed me the difference the latest technology is making in storm prediction. With conventional radar, 
it's like you're taking one picture. With dual pole, it's like taking two pictures. And with that second picture, you're getting more information. Is your weather radar picking up more than just the storm? In the past, radar sent out just one horizontal beam. Dual pole sends out a vertical beam as well. It gives the forecasters a new angle to see the storm. Honey, it's really coming down heavy. From rain to hail, to the rotation of potential tornadoes, and even snow. So if you have a case where there's like a rain-snow mix, you can actually see a sign of that in the radar much more clearly than you could before. This is dual polarization radar. It's the most recent technology. It's what we use in central Ohio. But that right there, that's the future. It's called phased array radar. You can really focus your time on the storms that can produce the most significant damage and that people may need more warning lead time on. Instead of sweeping the entire region, phased array can focus on just one cell when seconds count. If you're scanning every five minutes, you may actually miss the development of that circulation and end up perhaps with a warning that can be late. This future technology will allow forecasters to watch storms develop in close to real time and give you more time to prepare. With data that you're seeing here, sampled every 4.5 minutes versus up at the top, sampled every 43 seconds, at least it gives you the opportunity perhaps to be able to make a decision and get a warning. The future of forecasting severe weather. The progress I've seen in 27 plus years, remarkable, uh, and the future looks just as bright. Yeah, that phased array radar is certainly something else. It's up and running there in Oklahoma, but it's still about 10 to 20 years away from being used as a tool daily uh, for meteorologists across the country. Yo. All right, thank you, Bill. Well, now to that emergency supply kit we were talking about. You don't want to be caught without it if there is an emergency. Andrew Michael shows you what you need to get. There it is, right there beside us. When it comes to preparing for severe weather, the Red Cross keeps it simple. We tell folks three things. You need to get a kit, make a plan, and be informed. As a media outlet, we are your source to stay informed before the storm. So what should go in your severe weather kit? And for your severe weather safety kit, there's some things that you definitely would want to have and you probably think of yourself right off the bat. So here's ours. Get this set up. You know it's your first aid kit. You also want prescriptions for you or your family. Also, flashlight, batteries, but there's a lot more that you're going to want to have as well. Here are the items you may overlook but will wish you had. Radio, so you know when the coast is clear. In March of 2012, two tornadoes hit Henryville, Indiana, the second tornado following right behind the first. Other important items for your kit, food and water for both you and your pets for a few days. Important documents including birth certificates, social security cards, and how to shut off your utilities. Clothes, shoes. People don't think about this. If you have a, something strikes in the middle of the night, um, a tornado, you're going to be out and about and walking around and you may not have to find your shoes. So having shoes close by or in a kit would be really important. But the most important advice? Take warnings seriously. And just because tornadoes tend to hit the plains more than Ohio, we have seen yeah. our impact of severe weather here. Uh, we all remember last year in the windstorm. Uh, it was very hot. It had lost power for several days. Uh, this is a hardship for a lot of folks. So we can have our fair share of weather, weather storms here as well. He will need to be prepared and take it seriously. If a tornado ever hits, you'll be prepared as long as you take action now. Bottom line, just a few simple steps. You know you're ready to go. We're social networking, taking your questions live. And one of the best storm chasers in the world lost to a powerful tornado. Coming up, the impression that Tim Samaras left on a local chaser just days before the tragedy. November 10th, 2002, a tornado ripped through Van Wert, Ohio. A crowded movie theater took a direct hit, but the tornado sirens went off 26 minutes before that tornado arrived, allowing everyone inside to take cover. Unfortunately, two people died elsewhere in Van Wert. That tornado was rated an F4 with an estimated wind speed of 260 miles per hour, almost an F5. And we are in the midst of a deadly tornado season right now. Really, and there's some new information now about the twister that broke records as it tore through the Oklahoma City suburb of El Reno last week. This is now the widest tornado ever recorded, two and a half miles at the base. The National Weather Service says the wind speed was just shy of 300 miles per hour. That's one of the highest speeds ever measured. 19 people were killed. Oklahoma, of course, the heart of Tornado Alley. 
While Ohio rarely sees the deadliest twisters, but Bill's back now to explain why Tornado Alley earned that name. Bill? Yeah, I'll tell you what, Bob. The Central Plains of the United States is the tornado capital of the world, and people from all over the globe head here in late spring, and that's because the conditions are just perfect for the development of storms. So I want to take a minute and show you why. A lot of you ask me this when I see you out in public. You say, well, why here? Well, what happens is we have this area of low pressure to the north and what's called the Bermuda High back to the east you get this massive collision of air masses, the warm and the cold. Now that alone, because of the density differences, allows for showers and thunderstorms to pop up. And we get that in our area all the time, the cold front and the warm front. The difference, the primary difference in the plains is the position of the jet stream and the lower level winds. There's a term that I don't use a lot on air. Uh, it's called shear. And what that means is there's a shifting of the wind as you get higher up. So as these storms develop, there's actually some twist going on uh, in the middle and in the upper parts of the atmosphere that turn. They start rotating these storms. And once a tornado gets going, man, it can just go like a top. Now, we will get a some of these ingredients. We'll get some warm air and cold air. We'll get some shear, but we typically don't get all of these together. And even when you get them together, even then, a tornado is fairly rare, especially a, a large tornado, because you have to have certain lifting mechanisms to get them going. So can this happen in Ohio? Well, of course it can. And we've just been running all these different places, the Van War tornado, the Xenia tornado. It can absolutely happen in our area, but we are not positioned in a prime place for that. Just the topography and the geography of our country and where these systems come together is what makes Tornado Alley, which is basically the central plains of the United States, the most uh, active place for tornadoes in the world. Bob. All right, Bill, and among the dead in the El Reno tornado we just talked about were three veteran storm chasers. They were known for their concern about safety. Andrew Michael now spoke to a local storm chaser who had met Tim Samaras just days before he died. Oh yeah, it's a big tornado, it's a wind. Aaron Rigsby started Ohio Storm Chasers to report ground yeah, confirmation of tornadoes to help save lives. So Aaron and his team take safety very serious, whether it's wearing a helmet if they're in the middle of a hail core trying to take photos, or the first thing to do, Track it on radar and make sure they're out of harm's way before the storm even approaches them. He returned last night from a week of chasing storms in the plains. While there, Rigsby was able to meet Tim Samaras, pictured here in the light blue jeans. Aaron is on the far left. He's a legend in the community. Samaras and Team Twistex have spent decades chasing tornadoes in order to understand them better, increase warning times, and save lives. He is also known to be very cautious. He was telling us that we could go check out the lightning vehicle. That's so awesome. Yeah, I, how else do you point a 1600 pound camera? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. One final photo is Rigsby with Carl Young, the Team Twistex driver. Take note of the car. Young Samaras and his son Paul were killed in the El Reno tornado on Friday when it took an unexpected turn. Oh my God. This is what was left of the car. The news hit the entire storm chasing community hard because of Samaras's reputation for safety. And so we pulled over and we just all kind of broke down crying because he was such a nice guy. What was the final things that he told you? He told us that we'll see you out there guys, be safe. And those words just keep repeating in my head. A vivid reminder of the uncertain nature of particularly tornadoes, even for those who know more about them than anybody. And if you know you're safe from the storm, and we'll uh, say that again, know you're safe, you know the storm has passed, we hope you'll share your photos with ABC6 News. See it, shoot it, send it. Email the photos in to pix at wsyx6.com and help us tell the story. They say turn around, don't drown. Flash flooding is the number one cause of weather related death in the US, and that's mostly people who are washed away on water covered roads. And even if it's urban flooding like we saw in 2009, it is still a bad idea to try to drive through it. It can cause serious damage to your car. Bill shows us the first warning weather tools that tell the story of a storm after it's passed. We spend most of our time forecasting for you. What's the day going to be tomorrow? What's going to be tonight? But more importantly, we're talking about severe weather. When is this storm going to hit your neighborhood? How far away is it? We look out ahead, but every now and then it's important to look back. What happened to the storm? What did it do? What kind of history did this have? And so that's the tool that I want to show you. It's actually two tools here on first warning Doppler radar. We call it the rain vision and we call it storm reports. And so first I'll zoom you down and talk about the rain vision aspect of it. And it's these colors here. This is what the radar has then estimated the storm had not going to have, but on this particular day, 
Look at north of Marion. The radar estimated between three quarters of an inch to an inch of rainfall up into parts of Crawford County, 0.85. And we can look at that, and this helps us tell where some areas might be with some flooding. So that's the rain vision part of the uh, storm here. But then we also want to look at the storm reports. Now this is if any storm had damage, official damage, and it's reported from the National Weather Service, whether it's wind gusts, uh, wind damage, large hail, of course, tornadoes. And so as we go back here to our computer, all these emblems that you see right here indicate something different. These are wind damage reports when you look at these blue diamonds. So this one on this day was a wind damage near Springfield, Ohio at 407. In our area up here in Marysville, we had wind damage at 445. So we look at those things that we can say, OK, well, that's where the storm was very strong. And we can also look at specific wind gusts. And that is what the yellow triangle is here just outside of Magnetic Springs on this particular day. A 69 hour or 69 mile per hour wind gust reported at 453 and then another one just south of Marysville officially 59 miles per hour. That was at 445 on this particular day. So it's important to look how was the storm and where is it heading? And that also helps us keep you and your family safe. All right, we're answering your questions about severe weather, and there are lots of them. Uh, Facebook and Twitter, both active tonight. We have a live chat online going on, and we'll toss it back over to Andrew Michael, who's holding down the social media center here. Andrew? Hey, guys, a lot of questions out there. First one here, if I live in an apartment on the second floor, where do I go? You want to get underneath the stairs on the lowest level as possible. If they, they happen to have anything underground, head there. So let's go to our question that's actually on our page. We'll get to the first question here. What is the difference between a tornado warning and a tornado watch? Watch means that the conditions are there. Get your kit. Put it in a safe place. Warning means get there right now because it's actually heading your way. Uh, if there is bad weather like tornadoes on the freeway, what are you supposed to do? You want to get to the low lying area, get to a ditch. Do not go under a bridge. Bridges are actually less safe because it funnels all of that debris and all of that wind actually increases the wind. So you want to get to a ditch low lying area. Uh, I've heard the basement falling in on people, tornadoes. What is the safest place in my basement? You want to get next to those walls. If the house happens to cave, Lord, you want to be against those walls because if it actually caves in, you're going to be on the outlying area where the walls kind of make a little triangle, if you will. Uh, next question here. We're getting to all of these. That one looks like it's at the end of it. Well, we have a lot more questions. Jump on our Facebook page. Let us know what you're thinking. There's more questions. I guarantee we'll get to those coming up, guys. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Central Ohio native uh, joins one of the best weather teams in the world. How the weather here at home inspired him to become a meteorologist at the National Storm Prediction Center. That's coming up. Hey, real quick before we move on, I just want to address the sirens are going off right now into Fairfield County around Lancaster. Yeah. And, and so I'm getting some calls of you guys going, what's going on? Well, a train spotter said that he saw a, a funnel cloud coming with coming out of the sky with the light rain showers that are moving through. I see nothing on the radar at all. I called the National Weather Service, said, what do you guys see? They said, well, we don't see any rotation, so we're not going to worry about it. Not saying, it, Sheriff, if you're watching, not saying that, that you potentially didn't see anything, but it's Fairfield County's policy if they see something like that, they sign, they sound the yeah. alarm. So it, it doesn't look like it's a, a deal, uh, but I just want to let you know that's what's going on. All the calls from Fairfield County mm -hmm. uh, train spotter said he, he thought he saw a funnel out there, saw a little rotation. So it's their policy. But again, I don't see anything major uh, in terms nothing of nothing on the radar. Big, big tornado radar, moving through. Yeah, service, exactly. Okay. All exactly. Right. Bill's been showing us all of these high-tech tools that he managed to see when he was visiting the Storm Prediction Center recently in Norman. Yeah, and he's got a story of a meteorologist there who's from Worthington. Yeah, he's a cool guy. His name is uh, Ariel Cohen. He went to Ohio State, then the University of Oklahoma before becoming a forecaster at the SPC. Countless Americans depend on his forecast. Lives are at stake. So I asked him why he chose such a challenging career. I found a group of determined professionals at the National Storm Prediction Center dedicated to protecting your life and your property. Well, I've been passionate about meteorology my entire life for as long as I can remember. I've always had an interest in severe thunderstorms, tornadoes. Ohio State graduate Ariel Cohen is one of them. And I wanted to work for the National Weather Service since I was uh, seven years old. The Worthington native is all too familiar with the severe weather that threatens central Ohio. I just remember as a, as a little kid, um, some very strong storms would come through at night. His passion for meteorology born from a need to explain what scared him as a child. And it always drove this interest in trying to learn more about why these happen, what we can do to forecast them, uh, since I had an inherent fear for them. Now as an expert, he works with the storm prediction team to give you plenty of warning when a chance of severe weather threatens his hometown and yours. Yeah, it's such a nice guy too, and, and it's just interesting that he has that personal tie. 
And since I've met them, and I said we had that relationship that's developed, sure. yeah. we had one situation a couple of weeks ago where I didn't quite see, and I said, I asked him, I said, I'm not really seeing some stuff out there. And he said, yeah, I agree with you. Here's what we're looking at, blah, blah, blah. So just to have that the connection there with the not only the Storm Prediction Center, but from a local Worthington you, you guy. You inside source there. Yeah, right there. so he was just a neat guy to talk to. You have that instant connection because, you know, we're from the same and area. And he relates to what, you know, he can visualize exactly our area. For and sure. The, the mm -hmm. conditions in the area as well. That is yeah. important. Grew up just a few miles to the north there. Right. Yeah. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we're still checking in uh, on social media. We're yep. going to get another round of questions, and uh, Andrew Michael's over there handling that. Yeah, and uh, one thing I want to add real quick, if you have a weather radio, go to our website, abc6onyourside.com, click the weather tab. All of the codes for your individual counties, we posted them on there today for you, so you can check that out. Question, uh, I live near a senior apartment center in a storm disaster area. Where would be the safest place for them? Actually, the stairwells. Stairwells are normally completely block encased, so that's probably one of the safest places to get to, especially if the elevators are shut down, people can't get to the lower levels, get to a stairwell. Uh, our gas furnace and water heaters are in the center of the basement, not far away from the stairs. If a tornado is coming, my fear is that fire explosion. One of the things in your safety kit that we told you about, how to shut off your utilities. So you want to keep that uh, information in the back of your head if that happens. Uh, can you tell me water spout happens, uh, how radar can show general area where the tornado will happen? Uh, we keep an eye on tornado spouts, but normally they are very short-lived, very weak. Back to you guys. Awesome. All right, thank, thank you, you Andrew. Andrew. Well, we really hope you can take something away from our program tonight to keep uh, you and your loved ones safer. Remember, you can always depend on ABC6 News to keep you safe from the storm. Have a great night, everybody. See ya.